The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to the Ring and All of Sports. My name is Leo Connors, and tonight I got a special guest making his second appearance on the show, pro wrestling referee Kevin Quinn. Kevin. Leo, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you having me. I'm looking forward to it. We have a lot. As you can see, I post things on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of fan questions. So we're going to get them out of the way right off the bat. Uh, Kev, from Mike Brickhouse Baker. Mike Baker. He wanted to know, when did you realize you wanted to be a pro wrestling referee? Before I answer that, I'll tell you just a little quick story okay. how I met Brickhouse All Baker. Right. I met him down in the VFW in Fairhaven, Mass., I believe. And I didn't know him. He didn't know me. And I was at a ref. I was greener than the grass on a brand new front lawn. And I remember at one point he came over, put his arm around my shoulder. He said, hey, kid, see that kid in the ring with the hand in pockets? Don't do that. I went out, I ref a match, I came back. He said, you did pretty good. I said, cool, man, thank you. Nice. I don't know who he is. Right. I go out for my third match, I come back, he goes, listen, he goes, that was pretty good. I'm Brickhouse Baker, introduced himself to me. Nice. So that, that's how I met him. That's uh, awesome. He's when did I realize I wanted to be a pro wrestler? Yeah. Ref? I'll tell you, I watched wrestling all my life. I think I've watched every WrestleMania, showing my age. Yeah, um, me too. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and I used to go with my son all the time. I used to go to the Quincy Armory uh, all the time. And uh, I was just going to shows, going to shows, and I'm like, I like this. And then I went to uh, Atlantic Pro Wrestling, but it was their old name, Wrestling Star Wars. Yeah, I Wrestling think, Star Wars, yeah, was the, the one that Knuckles Nelson had originally started. Right. Yeah. So I did some uh, security work for them. Nice. My name was Kevin Steele, security. You told me that on the last time you were on. And I, uh, I roughed a street fight. They literally came over, I had gym pants on, they threw a ref shirt on me, I refed a street fight, and I just instantaneously fell in love with it. Nice. So I guess November 22nd, 2011 is when I decided I wanted to be a referee. Wow, and that, <clears throat> that's right there. You, that was your first match, right? That was my and that was the next question, Brick. Yep. He answered it, he gave, who gave you your first match? Yep, so uh, that, would, that would be, you know, and I'll just take a second, yep. that would be Joe Moakley and Big Woody. Nice. Uh, they gave me my first shot. Thank you. I say thank you all the time. Yep. Ed Hunt, mm, all right, thank you too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's where it started. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next question is from uh, Maverick Wild. He says, given that size isn't the impediment to pro wrestlers that it used to be, uh, and given your obvious commitment to fitness, did you ever want to be a wrestler over a referee? You know, when I watched it, in my living room or my bedroom or wherever I was watching it at the time. And uh, I see these guys, you know, doing this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I was into bodybuilding. I'm like, I think I can do that. Right. And then uh, when I first joined at a wrestling school, my first wrestling school was the Bell Time Club. And I took a couple of bumps. And I'm Real like, quick, was that Jason still there when you did it? Or uh, was yes, it Paul? Okay, it so was Jason, Jason Rumble was yep, still there. Okay. He was still there. But Jason was in the ring with me a couple of times. Bo Douglas was yes. my day-to-day -day right. trainer. Um, and I took a couple of bumps, I'm like, oh, all right. And uh, Bo was like, you know, those referees, and so I tried that, and I'm like, all right, yeah, this is more my speed. Because everybody knows, you know, I'm a little bit older than the normal ref. I got in a little bit later. Yeah. So as far as being a wrestler, could I do it? Probably, because I have right. the best trainer in the world right. to help me with Absolutely. it, if I wanted to do it. And yeah. we'll just throw something in there now. Yeah. Before it's all said and done, I'll wrestle one match. Nice. I'll wrestle one match. Oh, you got to let me know when it's happening, because I definitely want to go to and that. And when you find out who it's against, you'll be pretty... Uh, I'll, all right. Uh, I can tell you if you want. Yeah. It's tough to yeah. ask. Who is it? I, the one guy I would write, like to wrestle is two guys. Okay. Two guys. It would be A.R. Fox, yep. which I've already talked to him about it. And the other one, this is going to be a surprise, would be Matt Tabe. Matt Tabe. Matt two Tabe. great talents, right? Yeah, and they're two, two great, great talents, talents that could... Get me through a match. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's funny you brought up AF Fox. I said this once before. I had a picture with my grandson. He guys is only 11 years old, 10 years old. Yeah. And uh, he turns around, and after he got the picture, he said, what's his name again, Poppy? I 
I said, hey, Al Fox. He goes, nope, they ought to call him Weed Man. <laughs> next question. Yeah, next question. Uh, have you had any matches as a wrestler? No, because you... No, I mean, I've, I've gone in there and I've done a few things. Yep. Like, I've had a couple spots where I've had, uh, you know, yep. do physical stuff. Well, there's going to be a question in here that I know that somebody did to you, so we'll get to that. Yeah, later. but as far as an actual match, not yet. Okay. Not yet. And actually, I'm going to throw a third person yep. in there for if I ever wrestle in a match, Scotty Slade. You know, I swear to God, when you were saying the second yeah. one, I was going to burst out, burst out Scotty yeah. Slade. I think that would yeah. be, he'd get you through a match, too. Yeah, I think he's that, a hell of a talent. Let me tell you, he's, yeah. He, he really is. is. He is. A couple more questions on this. Um, why do you prefer your role as a ref? I just like it. Yep. Uh, I feel like I'm more of like an enforcer ref, so to speak. Yeah. You know, then, uh, and I just, I enjoy it. I mean, every time I wipe my feet, yes, we wipe our feet when we get into the yep. ring. And uh, every time I get to wipe my feet and get into the ring, I'm a happy guy. Nice. Doesn't matter who's in there, what company it's for. Yep. It's all the same thing. Right, right. It's a wrestling ring with a different name on the door yep. with the same people. That's right. all it is. And real quick, just to add to it, because he does not mean this in a demeaning way at all. Just interested in why you chose one over the other. Sure, yeah. Thanks for the question, Mav. Uh, next well, actually, up, excuse yeah. me, I'm sorry. Ahead, I'm going right. gonna, gonna, gonna to take a quick second, and yeah. Mav, Mav's the only guy that's going to know why I'm saying this. Okay. There was a locker room situation at a show in Wakefield a few years ago, or actually last year. I won't get into it, yep. but all I'll do is I'll look out and I'll say thank you to Maver. He'll know why. Nice, nice. I actually had to go to Jose Perez one time for things. I got there's a couple of people like, why would you go to him? Because I respected him. Absolutely. Obviously, you respect Mav. Absolutely. If you don't respect Mav, something's wrong with you. A uh, good little buddy of mine, Nathan Fuller, says, uh, what has your longest match you've refed in, um, in the best match you've refed? Yep. Yeah. Oof. Oof. I know. You've refed a lot of good matches. Yeah. My, I've done a couple of Iron Man matches. Okay. My first Iron Man match was a 30-minute Iron Man for, uh, again, I think it was wrestling Star Wars at the time, between Todd Sopel and Demon Ortiz. Oh, wow. And it was for the nice. uh, heavyweight title. And I distinctly remember there was nine different finishes wow. in that 30 minutes. I've done a couple other, a uh, couple others. I've done a 60-minute Ironman yep. or a 60-minute match. But I think the longest I've ever refed for a day is when I first broke in. I did a Beyond Wrestling taping at the New England Pro Wrestling Academy in Andover, and I think I refed 18 or 19 matches wow. when I finally said, "That's it." Yeah. That's yeah. a long day. The, the, the best match I've ever refed, you know what, Leo? Too many. We don't have enough time. But the one that stands out, and I think this is going to come up someplace okay, cool. else, but we'll just say it now, yeah, yeah. is I'm a pretty lucky guy because yeah. I'm the only one of two refs in the world that can say I refed for Cody Rhodes and Kurt Angle. Wow. Yeah, and I was lucky enough to do two out of their three matches. I've had three matches in their career. Right. Two have been over here, one was over in the UK. Okay. Their final match was in Waterbury, Connecticut for Northeast Wrestling, right. and it was a steel cage match. I remember you telling me about that. And on that, top yeah. of that, it was Kurt Angle's last independent wrestling match. Wow. So it was a twofold. I right. got to ref that match, and I got to ref for them. Yeah. And the part of that match that stands out in my mind, and I'll never forget this, we're taking that long walk back to the dressing room. Yep. It's literally Kurt Angle in front of me. It's me, and there's nobody else. And he stops. He turns around. He goes, "Good job, kid," and he shakes my hand. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm definitely. I'm a huge Angle fan. So. Yeah, I mean, he was. He's all business. Right. He's all oh, business. I'm sure. You know, but for a guy that got into pro wrestling late, late yeah. in his life too. Yeah. You know, but and I mean, he took to it like that. There's, there's guys that there's exceptions to the rules, and right. he's one. And then we'll talk about another one in a little while. He, had, he did a lot of work with Steve Bradley, you know? Yeah. You know that. Yeah. So I think Steve, I, Steve Bradley was my trainer's trainer. Right. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So you I think about it, the two trainers that I've had, yeah. I've had a true Kowalski guy, not yeah. guys that just say they train with Kowalski, right. a guy that actually trained with Kowalski, yep. and then I got a Steve Bradley guy. Right. Boom, together, here you are. Absolutely. He, you've definitely had some great trainers. Yeah. Uh, next question is from Big Bear. Big Bear Matuch. Yes. How you doing? He goes, uh, what goals, if you have any, as a ref? Sure. Well, yeah. My goals right now are to get signed and to do this full time. Short and sweet. Nice. And the second part is, what was the first, the worst moment you've ever had as a ref in the ring? That, 
I thought about that for a few minutes, and you know, I'm getting a little older. The memory oh, yeah. is good. I did a match down in, uh, I want to say it was Woonsocket, Rhode Island, for NWW Extreme. Okay. Jimmy Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Trooper. True. I'll tell you a little story about him later. All right. Uh, it was Mike Grassa Jr. and JT Dunn wow. versus a couple guys from Puerto Rico, and the finish was a, I forget what the finish was, a Death Valley driver or something, but it went wrong. And he literally was knocked out to the point where, you know, I, I'm professionally trained. Yeah, yeah. And I know the science to check right. and whatnot. And there was a point where I did this. Yeah. And what this means, if, you don't, if anybody doesn't know, if you see this, I don't do it unless it's right. a shoot, is somebody's hurt, they can't continue. In this case, he was knocked out. Wow. And I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I was trying. And all of a sudden, Jose Perez comes in. And he goes, look, I was a football coach for years. I know all about this stuff. So I'm like, hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. So we're pretty much taking everybody out of there and just letting them do their thing. Yep. And he finally came, too. But I'm telling you, it was 10 or 15 minutes. Wow. I mean, it might not have been that long. but Probably felt that way. Yeah. And that was the scariest moment in my life. And that's probably why him and I get along so well. Right. You and yeah. Jose? Oh. I get, Jose is a very good friend of mine. I get along great with Troop. Yeah. Mike Ross is Mike. junior. He's yeah. a lot of talent, too. Absolutely. He really is. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, next we got J.P. Griffin, who will be on in a couple weeks. What's your favorite moment in pro wrestling, and what made that moment special to you? So I've take, taken, you could say two ways, your, you know, your personal thing or what yeah. you've seen. I, I, think, I think we already touched on this. Okay. It yeah. was the Kurt Angle, Cody right. Rhodes match. And why was it so special? Because it's Kurt Angle's last independent match. And... I'm going to throw a second one on there. Yeah. Uh, we all remember Donovan Dijak? Yes. One of my, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right here. Correct. One of my favorite people to work with in the ring. Right. Uh, my favorite travel partner. Um, the guy is just a true professional. Yep. Um, you know, I'm an older guy, but I'd always get a text if we have shows. Hey, meet me here. But always took care of the travel arrangements. Right. Always took good care of me. And the road trips were great because we would just talk talk and let me tell you something that guy oh yeah and i mean you'll be seeing him in your living room like and only a matter of time i can't wait Seriously. Yeah. and he earned that and the other thing too is i refed his last independent wrestling for match chaotic, right uh, no actually no? for beyond wrestling oh, okay. against walter from uh, germany uh, i know everyone's gonna say well he did bola too but right. this was his last singles independent wrestling match right. and i got to ref it and when i tell you it was emotional I couldn't look at him. He couldn't look at me. Wow. It was tough. But it was great. Great match. Right. And Walter, I'll tell you what, I've refed him a couple more times. Yeah. Watch out for this guy. It's funny because I didn't know who he was. Just Either was, did I, it was either to be Saturday, honest with It was you. either yesterday or Saturday I decided to pull him up. Yeah. How unbelievable. How long has he been wrestling? Do you know by I chance? I truthfully don't know. He's really good. I've never seen anybody lock up like him. Right. He no, he's locks definitely up like good. A, nice like talent. Like a bear in the woods. Right. You know, I just ref for him and David Starr. That and, must have been good, uh, too. Oh, David Stein, I love watching I, him wrestle, I, I, too. Anytime in the ring with him, man, yeah. it's just... He's an incredible wrestler, man. Really Gen is. Janela, yeah. too. Both of them, I don't know why, how they're still on the Indies. I know. I want to say it's by choice, if I was to guess. Yeah, yeah, I would If tell. I was to guess, you know. Yeah, they're both. Didn't Leo, they we're getting fired up, man. We're yeah. getting going. Yeah. Now, real quick, didn't they just have a match on New Year's Eve? Yes, they did. That, and guess who was the ref? That would be me. Yeah, because I and see... you know what? You know what was cool about that? Okay. Now, we're in the ring at midnight. Yep. So they have champagne. Yeah, I saw that, too. Right, well, and they, they know me. I haven't drank in, you know, quite a long time. Right. So Angela, thank you so much. She literally came up to me. I had my own glass and yep. apple cider in nice. it. Nice. Nobody knew. Yep. But the funniest rib of all, right? Rich Palladino's a ring announcer. Yeah. So I think he's ring announcing, so I'm not sure they got him one. Yeah. So I drank half of mine, and I gave it to him, and I saw him drink it. And I saw his face, like, what was that? That's you know? a riot. But yeah, it was so cool they took care of me. That match, now that was on technically January 1st at yeah, like 12.03 right. like at said, night. Yeah, after midnight. That was probably the craziest match, hardcore match, I've ever been in. Really? Yeah, and I learned something valuable in that match. What's that? I need to get myself some heavy-duty CZW Cage of Death gloves because those rubber gloves, when you're counting on tacks, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? You feel it. Yeah, both those guys, I, I really enjoy yeah, watching. They're both, they're both great, and I'll tell you what, anytime that I am on a card and I see either one of their names, yeah. I hope my name's next to them. Right. 
Because I'll tell you, Joey Janela, man, when, when he was, I don't know if you remember, like, WrestlePro. Oh, uh, yeah. Pro Wrestling Syndicate at the sure, time. Yeah. He was playing Starman. Yeah. And he said he didn't want to do it anymore. He wanted to be Joey Janela. Yeah. And the, people laughed at him. I won't say the names. If they're watching, they know who they are. And sure. I respect them. Yeah. But, like, I thought it was just great because in the end, who has the last laugh? Yeah. The kid that, he's got a lot of talent for he a does. small little guy. He does. And I'll tell you what, it's shocking with how he actually, he can wrestle. Right. Just like Matt Tremont. Yeah. Matt Tremont doesn't like just do... Him. He's a nice guy, too. Nicest Tremont. guy you'll ever meet. Yeah. Until, Me and Isaiah met him. Until the bell rings and he's oh, yeah. at the office. And he's all business. Yeah. Um, Danny Miles, I don't know if this is a serious one or not, but we'll ask it anyways. How exactly did it feel to blow a transmission of a Ryder truck on the Jersey Turnpike in the middle of the night? That's a shoot. That's a shoot. We, Me and the guy I was traveling with, Anthony, we, we traveled together for yep. a little while. Uh, I used to travel with Ralph, Ralph Tarazano, yep. was the main travel Ralph. guy. Me and Ralph, we fought like brothers, but I know what, you know what, man? I love that guy, right. and I had so Ralph much fun on guy. the roads with him. I wish I could tell you about the bathroom story, but I can't. We'll do that um, off here. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a shoot. We drove 400 chairs back from, I think, South Carolina. Yeah. Now, these rider trucks, they have two settings. Right. One setting for when you're hauling, and one setting for when you're not. Okay. And you hit the setting when you're hauling, you're lucky if you're getting three miles to the gallon. Wow. The guy that owned the company, great guy, doesn't like paying tolls and didn't like gas receipts. I mean, he paid them, but right. he didn't like them. So we tried to stretch it a little bit. So it's about 3.30 in the morning, and Anthony's driving. All of a sudden, the truck, whoo, whoo. So I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, I don't know. I think the tranny's going. I go, you're kidding. Wow. So now we're literally in the middle, I think, Maryland. We're, we don't know where we are. We're using the GPS or whatnot. So I told him, like, just get in the breakdown lane. 20 miles an hour and just we'll ride it out as long as we can and somebody upstairs was looking over us because about three miles up there was a rest area so we pull in the rest area and now the train is 99 percent gone pull out the phone i said hey you gotta call the boss he goes no no you call the boss i said oh no he goes you're the senior guy and you're older you call me won't yell at you i'm like you know what Okay. <laughs> so we literally sat there for a minute. I mean, yeah. the guy I'm talking about is Steve Perkins. Who okay. big time wrestling. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. What happened? He said, hi. He said, you're not going to believe this. I said, the transmission in the truck blew. Now, anybody that knows him thinks the next part of this would be like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. Next part was everybody okay? Nice. Yes. We're fine. I got him a little stressed out. Yeah. But you're yeah, making this easier with this call. He goes, it's okay. He goes, go in the glove box. Well, went in the glove box. He goes, take the registration. I took it. He goes, turn it over. I turn it over. He goes, there's an 800 number there for roadside assistance. Call him up if you need anything else. Call me back and call me and update me. So I called him. I explained what happened. They sent out another truck. A few hours later, now it's cold out and we're trying to stay warm or whatnot. Now the other truck gets there. Now the biggest fun of it all is we had to move those 400 I'm chairs say, yeah. back into the truck, right? right? Yeah. So Not now fun. we drive the truck all the way back. I drop Anthony off. I go back. I pick up Steve. We go back to the warehouse. And guess what has to come back out? Right. Another 400 <sighs> chairs. So now we're talking of move 1,200 chairs yeah. after a long day of reffing and a long night of driving. But you know what? Wouldn't change it for the world. Nice. Steve, he's got a good thing going big time. Yeah, he and Danny, really does. And, and, and to, just to throw this in there, yeah. too, Danny Miles is a great guy. Yeah. And he's I've not, never met him, but I know oh, I've watched him wrestle many he's times. He's a great guy and he's a hell of a talent, and honestly, I think he's underrated. I yeah. think that. Uh, I think so, too. Yeah, I think that uh, he could be in there with the best of them. Uh, just my opinion. Right, and that's an honest one. Uh, real quick, we'll say it because he was my former co host. <laughs> you, all right, We talked about it off air, but. Why didn't you let your friend who lives in Florida know you were selling your house that is in Florida? And I'm going to say this. Derek, you're in London, Derek. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It was an emergency situation. Yep. You said. Uh, I had a situation there that there was no time to do anything except get rid of it, so to speak, sell yep. it. And I'll tell you what, I wish I still had it. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. Especially like you said, you said you wanted to retire down there. Yeah. Now you'll uh, have to buy another one. That's all right. That's it. Uh, from your trainer, Bo Douglas. Mm -hmm. Bo wants to say, Bo said, narcolepsy? I don't know. What, <laughs> I mean, he says this stuff, yeah. and I, mean, I don't. 
<laughs> he's crazy. Is he? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what he's talking about. Right. Him and Rumble, like, when fo- <laughs> I don't do that. All right. What about Canada? Canada. Yeah. Canada was probably the best experience. Really? One, excuse me. The, the best experience is I refed 150 matches in Canada alone. And within six months, because I got to tour up there with mainstream wrestling, yeah. with uh, Jason Rumble, Devin Chittick, uh, my brother Adam, Jack Pelly, who I miss a lot. Uh, and Bo basically was my big brother on yep. the tour. He took his experience and he taught me how to the rules of the road. I think that's why my road trips now are a lot better, because yeah. I know what to expect and whatnot. Right. And so I had a point where there was my 100th match. And to me, that was a miles. Yeah, 100 matches absolutely. in Canada. How many other refs from the United States have right. refed 100 matches in, yeah. in their career? Right. Let alone six months. Yeah. So now all of a sudden I'm in the bathroom and somebody comes in and says, oh boy, oof, you got a rough night ahead of you. I said, what's that? He goes, I heard them talking about the end of the match. They're going to give you a power bomb. That was the next question. The beautiful I go, a power bomb. I go, I've never taken one. And I said, my trainer always taught me you never give or take a move that you've never given or taken. Right, right. And I've never taken a power bomb. So the match, the match went on, and the end of the match came. Now the spot came where power bombs supposed right. to come in. Now it's my trainer. Am I nervous? Yeah. I mean, we all know I'm not the best bumper. Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> but we all know, too, that if I have to bump anybody that works with me, we get creative and we figure it out because right. it's a team effort, right? Right. So the spot comes up for the bump. A little nervous. Now at the end, now all of a sudden, Bo rolls out. And I'm like, what's going on here now? He's selling, he's selling, now he's working his way to the back. And I'm like, I'm just still in the ring. Like, all right, we, he's, something's going to happen here. Yeah. He gets to the curtain and he turns around and he literally goes, <laughs> and goes in the locker room. I come in the locker room, everybody nice. applauds, you know, for the 100th match yeah, yeah. and that. They ribbed a living, you know what, out of me. That's awesome. Yeah. Bo's a great guy. Bo's a great, Bo's a, Bo's, yeah, he's a great guy. Oh, no. He does. He definitely he does. does. Just because I tra- changed wrestling schools doesn't mean I feel any different about him. Right, right. And I've, it's funny because I've known a lot of guys for a long time, but I've always, I don't know, for some reason, I think Bo, you know, we took a liking to him. I like Bo. Yeah. And I think he likes me. He's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. Really I good think guy. something's going to come up later in another, okay, cool. some of my special matches, yep. I think, that's going right. to come up. Okay. I want to dig into that a little further. Sounds good. Let's get these last few questions Let's do up. It. Next up is Joe Bruin, who will be bringing back the New England Wrestling Hall of Fame this this year. Beautiful. I think it's in June. I'll try to get the exact date for you guys next week. Joe wants to know who inspired you to get in the business, and and you were you a fan as a kid. You covered that before. I know that, but yeah. I know you were a fan. I was definitely a huge fan. But how I actually got into wrestling? Yeah. I was in the gym. I was in Powerhouse Gym in Woburn. Yep. And I was literally going for a, a preacher machine. I distinctly remember that. And I literally bumped into somebody. He was going for it with headphones on. I was going for it with headphones on. And we literally bumped into yeah, each yeah. other. So I said, hey, you want to work in? He said, sure, kid. So I, hey, I'm Jason. Hey, I'm Kevin. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. Just started talking. Yep. He goes, you know, you know anything about pro wrestling? I said, you kidding me? I watch it every Saturday. He goes, come on, hey, kid. So he opened up what, I, what used to be the leg room. Yep. Opened it up. Wrestling. Right yeah. That's awesome. Got in it. He says to me, he goes, Saturday, you know, Saturday night there's a show at the Quincy Armory. He says, here's the address. He goes, you know, if you want to check it out. Right. Took my son, I checked it out. That's how I that's how I actually got started. Nice. Now was he doing the Crown Jewels then? Yes. With Damian Doc yes. Angelo. That yes. was a great, great tactic. Absolutely. And I was I, one of the only guys, right? I used to sit front row, everybody knows this, so it's yeah. no secret. I used to sit in the front row every month. Uh, and I was a heckler. Right. And enough for nothing, I was pretty good at it. Yeah. And I'll get into heckling in a minute because I'm getting paid back by a guy at NAW in Connecticut. Oh. In a, in a big way. Yeah. So every time the Crown Jewels would come out, I don't know if you remember them, but they had the little pump spray. Oh, yeah. So they'd look around, and they'd come out, and they'd catch my eye. And next thing you know, they'd come, what's up with you? And they'd spray me every time. Nice. Every time. And that, well, Tony Ulysses was their manager, correct? Yeah. No, I really, really, really like that tag team. Yeah. Him himself is a great guy. Oh, yeah. Great guy. A right. lot of people don't know. He was in the WWE. I mean, right. he wrestled a lot of big names. Yeah. And, you know, he's a great guy. Nice. Um, okay, so let's see. Who are your favorites to referee? That's all. These are all from Joe Bruin. You know, my favorites to referee, I, I, we don't have enough time for right. this. But my favorite person to be in the ring with yeah. is Rich Palladino. Nice. 
Yeah. Nice. As far as wrestlers, I mean, I'll just throw a few out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime I see any of the kingdom kingdom members, yep. anytime I see, you know, uh, Mike Verna, MJF, yep. you, yeah. That's a great talent. He's a great, he's got a big mouth. Yeah, wicked big mouth. You know, but the funny thing is he can back it up, so I should yeah. probably kind of be quiet He definitely here. can back it up. Mom. Yeah, he's bigger than you're... me, he's younger than me, but you know what? Yeah, I know, I hear you. Ooh. Now, I know you also love being in the ring with Dijak, too. He, you had said that last yeah, time on yeah, the show. Yeah, I mean, he... Uh, Again, you got to be careful here because people get upset. Right. But all in all, at the end of the day, last year, Donovan Dijak was easily my favorite person to ref for. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy refing for other people. Because oh, yeah, I'll, I'll say this again. Every time I wipe my feet and get in the ring, yep. I'm a privileged guy. Right. Nice. Uh, let's see what else we got. At. As a ref, you must see names on paper and get excited more so than others. Does that happen to you? I, I'm not going to lie, yeah. Yeah, it does. Right. I mean, you know, I'm a Massage Envy guy. Those guys, I don't know if you yeah. know who they are. Oh, yeah, they're they're great. Guys. They're yeah. great. Anytime. There's so many guys. Right. There's so many guys. There's so much great talent there in is, the Northeast. There is. And with Beyond Wrestling, the one thing that's different about Beyond Wrestling, if, you don't, if this is okay, yeah, yeah. that's a little different than other companies, is there's literally people from all over the world. Yeah, but see, that's why I like them. I would have probably never met A.R. Fox right. if it wasn't for Beyond Wrestling. Yep. And I've had some outstanding matches there. And I work with, I'll tell you what, this is probably one of the best one-two punches. Yep. Uh, the best one-two punch in NEW is me and Vinny Lax yep. all day long. The best one-two punch in uh, Beyond Wrestling is me and Steve Dumang yep. from New York. I'll probably mess that up. Uh, and Tony P is a good guy I like to work with. He's on a little hiatus there, but yep. he's a fun guy to work with. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just I'm a lucky guy, man. Right. As far as, a, do I have a favorite now? I might. Yeah, I, I might. I might, and I might, uh, you know, Joey Janela, he's at the top of the we list. talked about him off the He's at the he top of the list. Of talent. And anytime I get to be in the ring with David Starr. Yeah. You know. Uh, kid. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's so many of them. Right. We, uh, I could literally use this 30 minutes. And oh, easily. And just go through easily. it. Easily. You know? uh, next up, we got Ty Wetmore. Yep. Who was that? Ty Shine, right? Ty Shine. Ty Shine. Yeah, yep. uh, tell us about the incident. At the Ricky Steamboat Seminar. I, once I saw that, I couldn't wait to hear the story. Yeah, I'll tell you about that. Um, luckily enough, with uh, Northeast Wrestling, I've got to work with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat a lot. Right. I mean, he's a WWE Hall of Famer. Yeah. Uh, I've got to have some nice sit-down talks with him. Now we're at a seminar uh, hosted by Northeast Wrestling. Yeah. Now you've got the owner and promoter of Northeast Wrestling in the house. You've got the owner and the promoter of XWA, Mike Antonucci, in the house. Yeah. You've got Ricky the Dragon Steamboat in the house. You've got Ricochet in the house. You've got Tessa Blanchard in the house. You've got um, Keith Lee in the house. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're doing matches, you know, whatever. Yep. Now, I'm doing this match with two guys from New York. One of them was trained by Johnny Rods, the person I had the incident with. So they're wrestling, they're wrestling. This guy gives, now they're friends that are wrestling each right. other. So the guy gives the other guy a small package. And I hear this thud. So I literally thought, he spiked him. Right. So my job as a referee is not only to count the one, two, three. My job is to make sure that everybody's okay, right. check on people and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I legit thought he was hurt. Right. Legit. And when I think that, that's when it's, it's no more fun. This right. is like, yeah. so I basically said, hey, talking to him like this is what we do. Yeah. I'm like, hey, let me check on him. Literally, when I say shoves me to the side, shoves me to the side so hard that I bounce off the rope, I end up on my butt. I look at Taven, Taven's like, oh, oh. I go, ring the bell, that's it. Yep. So they ring the bell. Now he's got him on the ropes and he's choking him. So I go over, I go, the match is over, get off. Give him the count, he doesn't want to get off. I got him off. Nice. Now I'm moving him back. This guy wants to go. He wants to go. And now I'm a professional. Right. And I've got two people that I work for and a WWE Hall of Famer. So I'm trying to keep my cool. Right. So Matt Taven says, all right, guys, that's enough. He starts to give the feedback. And he says, first of all, I'm not sure that I you know, want to push a ref, especially, you know, he's a little jacked up and I think he's a little hot. So the kid wanted to go. Wow. So I walked back over to him and now I see his buddy come walking over and I'm like, I look outside, I'm like, all right, this, this isn't going to, you know, we'll yeah. be okay here. So then I said to myself, I said, you know what, I'm going to be the bigger man. Yeah. 
go shake my hand. He wouldn't, didn't want to shake my hand. Really? He ended up shaking yeah. my hand, but in hindsight, I should have just punched him in the face. Right. I should have wow. just punched him in the face. That's a good story. It is. Was, was Ty there? It was, I probably, yeah, yeah, he, yeah probably, yeah, I think so, yeah. Nice. Last question. It's from Anthony Mark Balkus, a big APW fan. Yeah. I mean, probably the biggest APW fan that's out there. Yep. He wants to know, what are your top five matches you ref? Um, like you said earlier, I'm sure you have way more than five. Yeah, five yeah, there's a couple of my okay. favorites that I actually wrote down. Okay. Um, I did the Young Bucks versus the Hardys. Oh, wow. Which was awesome. And NEW? Yep. yep, and that was in Waterbury, Connecticut, and there's a spot in that match that sticks out into my mind. One of the Young Bucks had Matt Hardy in a, uh, like a rest hole, so to speak, yep. across, uh, and uh, I'm down checking on him, and Matt Hardy looks at me, and he's, uh, he said, we had a little talk, and it was an awesome match, man. Awesome. That is cool. I've got to work with the Young Bucks a lot. Yeah, you know they—they yeah. they really they super are. kicked me so hard one time I fell forward. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a joke. <laughs> um, you know Cody Rhodes, Kurt Angle, yep. two times, one in a steel cage. That was cool. Uh, I refed an awesome match last year uh, between J.T. Dunn and Chase Del Monte for Chaotic Wrestling yep. in a steel cage, oh, wow. which was awesome. Uh, I refed a match a while back. It was at the IWA Chop Shop. It was with Donovan Dijak and Brian Fury, one of my. That match was awesome. Right. Ferry pulled the pile driver out of his arsenal. It was awesome. Uh, and then again, Donovan Dijak's last match right. with Walter is the nice. one that stands out. There you go, Anthony yeah. Mark Balkus. Um, I was, there was something when you first said that. Uh, were you in the ring when Chase got that thing? That no. Oh, you weren't no, that I match? wasn't reffing that Crazy, match. huh? Yeah, yeah. We talked about it on here when he came on. He was a great guest, man. Chase? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Chase really is... Chase is a good guy, yeah. man. Chase, uh, you know, me and him, it's funny. Every time we see each other, it's like, we, we, right. But you know, at the end of the day, I've ref more matches for him in Chaotic than probably anybody. Nice. Yeah. Um, we'll play the name game if we, you know, if we need something to talk about after, but I do want to bring up one name. I've been bringing him up a lot sure. to people. Um, the late, great D.C. Dillinger. D.C. Dillinger. I'll tell you how I met him. Okay. I'm at the Bell Time Club, brand spanking new. Right. I don't. This may have been my first week of training. Okay. And I remember distinctly Dan Terry, uh, the fittest man in America. Yes. Was there, and I remember they were trying to teach me ETF. how. To, yes. And they were trying to teach me how to bump. Yeah. And I just I remember them saying because I just I couldn't get it. You know, still still working on it. Yeah. That's okay. Here, I'm telling you right now. Right. So you don't have to anymore, okay? You can get <laughs> off that train. And um, Dan Terry says, no, you need to take a flat back bump. Right. Next thing you know, this guy gets in the ring. So how you doing? DC Dillinger. So let me tell you something. You're in a match with me and I bump you. You ever take a flat bump, flat back bump? I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to punch you in the face. Refs crumble. They don't bump. Right. Good luck, Stripes. That's nice. how I met him. Right. That's how I met him. Were you ever lucky enough to go to any of his Christmas parties? I know he loved DC, Christmas. DC, yeah, yeah. I, I, went, I, I went to one. Did you? I don't remember when. Right. Um, but a lot of people don't know that I was a lot closer with DC than people know. Right. I went to the gym with him for three months when he was trying to make his comeback. He was coming back. Okay. Yep, yep. yep. And uh, I remember the day I texted him, and I said, you're running late. He got to the gym. He goes, what was that text? I go, you're running late. He goes, what was that? I said, you ready to work out? <laughs> I had some good workouts with him. Right. And it was a great guy to have in my corner. Nice. Um, that was a guy that I could call 24 hours a day, right. seven days a week. Same thing with George Carroll. Yep. George Carroll is a huge Ref Quinn supporter. Um, I text him and email him. Always, respond, always responds back. Doesn't matter what time of the day or night. Right. Um, I'm just throwing those two in yep. together because they're, oh, they're be they were best absolutely. friends. Absolutely. And I have a great relationship with George, too. When I first started the show, I went to him for feedback, and he yeah. gave me a lot of good stuff. Yeah. He actually said that he actually tried to get a hold of, well, he did get a hold of Jamie from Chaotic. Yep. He tried to hook us up. So hopefully, Jamie, well, I gave him some dates. Hopefully, he'll say yes soon. And sure. We'll get him in well, here. Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's living a little bit of the retired life right. now, so he's probably got time. But That's I, another guy who's a wrestling encyclopedia. Right. Yeah. Him and Mark. Have you, adult. Right. Have you ever had uh, Anthony Green on here? I want to. You need to get him on. And I, the, really reason, the reason that I'm saying that is actually, I'll just throw this in. Yeah. I'm, I'm keeping my eye on the clock. Oh, yeah. Um, 
he helped me with some of my first bookings. Oh, okay. Yeah, him and uh, another kid from uh, Haverhill. His name. Oh, I know who is who it is. Got a man bun? No. Adam. Oh, okay. So it's not. Yeah. Oh my God, I forgot his name. Uh, but anyway, he knows who it is. Right. But AG helped me a lot when I first started. He's still the guy that I go to when I need ref advice because he was a great ref. Right. Hopefully he stays a wrestler. He's got so much talent. I remember talking he's to a just, couple of people. He's got that, like, tall, you know what I mean? He's too? just cracking the shell. Yeah. He's just cracking really, the shell. Really? I really enjoy watching this is him gonna be, a This is going to be a big breakout year for him. Nice. And when you had brought up to him, we talked about DJ George Carroll yeah. real quick. When I, If I do get Jamie on, he's going to help me with the questions. Sure. George knows everything. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, and I told him I gave him credit for it, you know, because George is a great guy. I love George. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so... You told me before when we decided, you know, you wanted to come back on again. You said you had a lot of things to say. Mm -hmm. Here's your chance right now. Anything you want to say? Yeah, there's a couple things. All right. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank all the promoters that yep. I've ever worked for and the people that I work for right now. Um, that would be, ready for this one? Yep. I want to thank Brian Fury yeah. at Chaotic Wrestling uh, for our shows this Friday night. Uh, and I want to thank Jamie, uh, Jamie Mikulski, an adult, yep. for helping me get in there and uh, have a great career so far at Chaotic. But there's two other people that need thank yous there as well, and that would be Rich Palladino yep. and the Kingpin, Brian Malones. Nice. And I also want to say thank you to uh, Mike O'Brien, Mike Lombardi from uh, Northeast Wrestling. Yep. Uh, that guy gives me some great opportunities. I want to say thank you to Mike Antonucci from XWA. What they did for me for my fundraiser will be will never ever be forgotten. Uh, Drew Cordero, Denver, Colorado, the man, not yep. the place from Beyond Wrestling. Love you, man. Nice. Gives me some great great matches, man. And also uh, Chris and Chris and Jim over at Lucky Pro. Okay. Uh, great. Yep. You know, I've had... Nice I, guys. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Really I nice did guys. a lot of work over at Top Rope with Steve Ricard. Uh, I'm not there right now. Right. Unfortunately. Uh, but you never know. That could change. Yep. You know? But to everybody there, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, to all the people that I get to work with in the ring, outside of the ring, ring crew, referees, all this setting up and all that, thank you. Um, <laughs> Who else is there? It's everybody, man. I'm a lucky guy. Yeah. I really am. You know, uh, my trainer now, Brian Fury, is not only my trainer. He's my friend. He's, right. he's a guy that I go to with stuff. He's a guy that I text with. Hey, man, they want to blah, blah, blah. He takes good care of me. Um, Brian's a great one. I mean, he is. When he had his last few matches, I, I, my girl's sitting in the room. Oh, you can't see her, but uh, I, I, had, I, had to go to three, I had to go to three of them. And I usually don't go to shows on Fridays because yeah. Friday just doesn't work for me. Right. But it was like 6 o'clock, and I just said, I, said, I got to go. Yeah. I have to see this, yeah. you know? I ref so many of his, out of his last dozen final fights, as they said, I'd be willing to bet you I did eight of them. Wow. I got to the point that other referees from other companies were messaging me, like, I have his match at, at this show. It's just, and there's nothing wrong in wrestling. I, right. fi I finally figured it out. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. Right. Because if I'm not being selfish, there's going to be somebody else that is. And, yep. you know, just so you know, the line starts here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there's been a lot of talent in New England alone, right? I want to ask you, you get some kids at the training facility now. Should we be keeping an eye on anybody when Absolutely. they come out? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can't miss this guy. Right. He's six foot seven. He's probably 265 pounds. His name is Josh Briggs. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, right now, yep. he's one of my favorite people to be in the ring with. Nice. And I'm not going to lie to you, yep. the cards that I do when I see his name, I'm not going to lie, I go right over and put my name. Nice. Because as being the senior ref, one of the things that comes along with it is a lot of times I do the card. Okay. But when I started, a lot of guys did the card and they're like, yeah, you're not ready, blah, blah, blah. You do the blah, blah, blah. I work so good with the refs that I work with. Like, NEW assigns them, which is, they give me great matches, so I don't even have to worry about right. that. But beyond wrestling, I assign all the matches. And Steve and I, and a lot of times Tony Stevens is there, we sit down, and we look. And we're like, what do you want? Right. 
I'm not gonna lie. I look at it early, and I'm like, yeah. I'm taking this, this, and this. You know. Nice. But we get along great, and it's all about working together. Like it's all about working together. So I got another question about what companies would you love to that you haven't worked for? Yep. Well, that you really want to? I mean, sure. Like really want them? Absolutely. Uh, Ring of Honor. Yep. Ring of Honor. I have uh, quite a few friends in Ring of Honor right now. Um, I've done a few camps. Um, I've done everything that you need to do to get in there, but I can keep doing camps till I'm blue in the face and spend three hundred dollars each shot because right. I believe that's what the camps cost. And for me as a referee, it's not about doing the camps and showing them what I can do because they know what I can do. Right. Todd Sinclair knows how I ref. Right. He knows what I can do. Yep. It's about is there a spot? When's the last time? Uh, Ring of Honor had a new ref. I'll, I'll let you know. Probably about ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah. I mean, well, they have that new, there. Yeah, and Todd Sinclair, and they have that new guy now. Um, I forget his name. I apologize for that. Um, but those are the three refs. Right. You know, and I have people in there that are pushing for me to get in there. Oh, nice. Yeah. And another company is uh, Evolve. Yeah. I've uh, I've talked with Gabe. I've had okay. talks with Gabe. Uh, George Gabe too. George Carroll's gone out of his way to try to help me there. Um, that's something that I think this year that will happen. Oh, good. I think that will happen. That would be awesome. Um, Love to see you in our ROH. Yeah. Right. And then real quick, I have emailed uh, Impact Wrestling yep. quite a few times. Right. Um, I, I deal directly with the talent relation guy. Uh, he email, emails me right back. I think that's only that's a matter of time. Nice. I think someday I'm going to get an email, say, hey, pack your bags, come do a taping. Because nice. if you think about it, there's no Hebners there anymore. Stifler, they're all gone. Right. My friends, two of my friend, ref friends, did all the tapings. They did oh, Bound really? for Glory. Oh, yeah, nice. that could have been me. Right. But I didn't know the right people at the right time. Yeah. So that's okay. It's all right. It's a lot of great places for you to work. Too. Absolutely. What about House of Hardcore? House of Hardcore, House, House of Glory, yeah. Wrestle Pro, yep. Jersey All Pro. Actually, I think I worked for Jersey All Pro when I first started. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think they were under a different was name. Was it down there or was yeah. it not Pickers? Remember, no. they did two shows in Mass. I catered both of them. No, it was down in uh, New Jersey. Okay. It was with Ricky O, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah, O, yeah. Yeah, that, I met him. Um, that's where I, that was my first road trip with, uh, we'll just say Makua. Yep. I'm not sure if people know who that is. Yep, but I he, do. He's a good friend of mine, <laughs> Sam Amato. Great guy. Yeah, he, he went out of his way. Did he? Yeah, because he literally dropped me off at one show, yep. and he went down the road to another show. Now, this was one of my first bookings, and... The promoter come up to me and says, how do you want to get paid? Do you want a flat rate or do you want to get paid by the door? I looked right at McCoy, Sam McCoy. I said, yeah. what do I do? He says, take the door. I took the door. I ended up making almost as much as him. But I got wow. paid. Yeah. And he's like, wait a minute. And I'm like, I did what you told me to do. Yeah. You know? Sam is unbelievable. Yeah. And, unbelievable. I, and I have connections at WrestlePro. I have connections yeah. at um, House of Hardcore. Um, Game Changer Wrestling. Never know. Nice. I just so that's Brett Lauderdale and DeMonto, right? I just worked for one of their champs, so right? yeah, you never know. You know DeMonto hits me up once in a while. He said, you got to come down to the shows. It's right up your alley. He's I'm a like, great guy. I was in Watertown last yeah. year when they were uh, they had a show there, and uh, I was traveling with uh, a few people. Fury, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I uh, always bring my gear with me. He walked by me. Hey, what's up? Get your gear. I go, yeah. I go, what's, what's the pay? And he goes, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, how about this? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went and got my nice. bag, and I ended up roughing. Nice. Yeah. I don't want to get anybody mad or anything, but I, I have one question for you. The Hit Squad's not booked anymore for Beyond. Yeah. Which bums me out. Bums honestly. you out. You know? Bums me out. Um, I, I, was in, I was in one of the... One of the, one of the best tag battles I've ever been in that I think. Right. Is first was one with them and two guys from, from Quebec. Okay. Um, my God. Brain issue there. It's all right. I forget. <laughs> anyway, great yeah. guys. And the other two was against War Machine. Yeah. Those guys in War Machine, I remember the bell was supposed to, just about to ring. Was that a Beyond? Yep. Yep. I think I was there. And it was Ray Rowe, and he was hooked uh, with Steve Mack, yep. I believe. And I tried to get in between. He looked and he says, step back. And I'm like, whoa. That's yeah. an in Ray Rowe is an intimidating oh, dude. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, I'm wondering, I'm hoping that the rumors that I've been hearing are true about maybe moving to NXT or the WWE. 
I'm not looking if you know anything. I'm not asking I, for that. All yeah. I'm saying is I can't wait till that happens. I can't Todd either. has earned that, man. Yeah, yeah. You You're know? talking War Machine? Yeah, War Machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wherever they go, they belong. Right. Wherever they go, they belong. They yeah, great Don't get me wrong. I would love to see the hit squad there, too. Yeah. I mean, to me, Office of Pain, a, a hit squad juniors. I think, that's I th that's I th just I th me. And I think we sort of see a resemblance of War Machine on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know? With the, uh, what do they call themselves the now? Bludgeon Brothers, the, I, I believe. I love that gimmick. Yeah. yeah. I really do. Yeah. I mean, they were a tag team. Well, you know, Luke Hopp is incredible. Boy, what? Boy, he dropped some weight. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. he, he must be helping Rowan so much. He has to, yeah. You know? Ooh, that message almost went well. Okay. Ah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, I'm a huge uh, Hit Squad fan. Yeah, I... And it bums me out that they're not working. I even said on one of their posts, yeah. you know, that yeah. to, you know, bring back the Hit Squad. And, yeah, yeah. And I'll I don't just, think I'll it's going to happen. I'll just, I'll just yeah. go real quick with yep. the Hit Squad. I love them. I work with both of them. Yep. Whenever they're on the car, usually I have their matches. Yeah. But when I got sick in Ohio uh, and I saw them, yeah. they said to me, they said, dude, what, you don't reach out? You don't tell to let us know what happened? And I said, I'll be honest with you, I kept it really quiet. Right. And he says, why would you keep it quiet? I says, well, I was afraid I was going to lose bookings. Danny Moff dropped his bag and he said, walk with me. And I said, well, he said, shut up. He says, let me tell you something. Wrestling's going to be here today. It's going to be here tomorrow. It's going to be here next year. Yep. It's going to be here in the next decade. Your health is all you have. Right. So you need to take time off. You take time off. And any bookers have a problem with that, you can have them talk to me. Right. Kiss me on the cheek and said, He's a great take, guy. He's, I've known him <laughs> since 2002. Not that we're but, you know, yeah. any buddies, but last time I saw him was at a Beyond show. I went to go shake his hand. Yep. And he's like, known you too long yeah, for this. Yeah. And I hope, a great I, guy. I hope I can say this without getting us yeah. in trouble, but don't piss them off. Oh, I could have. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't want to piss them guys off. I wouldn't want to piss Steve off either. Even though, and Steve, though, seems like the happier of the two. He's he's the one that keeps control, I would say. Right? Yeah. What a tag team, though. Honestly. Great guys. I yeah. love how the story of them getting together and all that. Yeah. You know, they yeah. just look so similar. Yeah. They threw them together, Fat Frank and Pierre down at Jersey yep. All Pro. Yep. Um, any, anything else that you might want to discuss? And uh, then we can get into the name game after we got yeah, I, still time. I, I, well, all of this was was the questions. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, from the, um, yeah, I think this is pretty much, I think, I cover, I think we covered everything, right, cool. I think. So yeah. let's uh, let's do a little bit of the name game. Sure. I'm going to bring up guys that I don't know at all. Okay. You, you said something about this guy earlier, Mike Verna. Mike Verna. Mike Verna is a great guy. Is um, he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, I work with him a lot at Chaotic Wrestling. Uh, for some reason, I want to say I've only refed for him once or twice, right. and I think we know the reason why they don't want to put two body guys <laughs> yeah. at the same time. I'm sure, I don't <laughs> I know, know if that's true or not. Great guy. Yeah. Great guy, and I think his uh, the tap is just opening on his potential. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I remember the first time I saw him. Actually, the first time I saw him live was at Fury's last final fight. Yeah. Now, there's a guy that's from New York, right? Yeah. Now, there's a guy that I've only known a short period of time. Right. There's no handshake. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice. You brought up House of Glory earlier. Yep. Have you met um, have you met uh, Brian? Uh, I think his last name is Baez, but he used to be Brian XL. He's one of the guys that runs that mm -hmm. company. I think with Red, right? Yeah. How about Red? Uh, Did you ever I, get to meet Red? I have. Nice kid. I reffed with him, and I believe it was Shinron. Oh, nice. At Beyond Wrestling. I believe it was Shinron. I believe. Yeah. I'm really not like he used That's to That's all right. And I remember I told him. Whenever I work with guys like Shinron, A.R. Fox, Flip Gordon, yeah. which hopefully we can touch on. Oh, I definitely will bring okay, him up next. Good. Um, I always tell him the same thing, and you'll laugh when I say this. I'll be in a corner if you need me. <laughs> so we're walking out, and he said, he, Red said to me, he goes, grab a buckle, and we'll be good. Nice. It was insane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Red's, Red's a hell of a talent. I met him, like I said, when I was doing the ROH shows. Back to, back to Denver, Colorado. Just I went, The very first Beyond show, the next, the next day I went on Facebook, and I told him. I yeah. said, you know, wow, what a show. Yeah. So impressed, reminded me of early ROH. And he said, that's the biggest compliment I, I can get yep. because that's my favorite time in wrestling. Absolutely. He said, the Ring of Honor roster in 2002 Yep. To what, like maybe 2006 or seven? But in my eyes, one of the best rosters ever. Yeah, and I mean, he he's a wrestling. He he's a he'll tell you anything you need to know. He's a right. nostalgia that yeah. guy. 
you know? And it, him, like every other promoter, when I get paid, I always shake their hands, yep. and I always say, thank you for having me. Right. Yeah, I know. He's good got a good product. Uh, <laughs> you know, I haven't been to a show in a while, and I need to get back. Yeah, yes, I you love do. those shows. Yes, you do. Love them. Um, how about uh, Tommy Dreamer? Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer. I know is he's a, worked for Chaos. Absolutely. A few times. Tommy Dreamer is a great guy. I'll tell you a real quick story. Yeah. I was in a situation in a match where something went wrong and I, and I got rocked. Okay. And pretty much got knocked out for a brief second. And my faculties weren't there or whatever. And who do you think was the first one when I came in the back? Him. He sat me down. He's like, You're done for the night. You're not reffing. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm not. Sit down, you're done. He went to the promoter, the booker, rather. He's like, he's done. He's, he's yeah. sat with me, talked to me, told me about stories about him and concussions yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, just a great guy. Yeah. And the second part of the story, I worked with him, I'd say it was a year later. I don't, it, was a, it was a long time right. later. Came up to me, pulled me aside, how you feeling? Nice. Remember my name, yeah. remember the concussion. There's a guy like that that it's a household name. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Tommy, I mean I met Tommy a few times. I got to, you know, I've yeah. dated a few of them. If his you're shows. out there, I mean, you know, House of Hardcore, you need a ref. Yeah. Well, guess what? I talked to Damon, you know, the, the wrestling fan. How yep. did you say his last name? Farah? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And he had posted a picture of Tommy, so I'm like, ask him when he's coming to Boston. Yeah. And he said Tommy told him two thousand eighteen. Nice. I've been waiting for him to come to Boston. He's a great guy. He seems like such great a great guy. guy. Class act. Somebody who's very humble. Next guy, you brought him up a second ago. One of the top talents from New England. Yep. Being booked every, everywhere. Yep. Flip Gordon. Flip Gordon, man. He calls me dad. Does he? Yep. Nice. Kids around me, I call him kid. Just, uh, it's only a matter of time before you're yeah. watching him and you're I think the good thing about his career is I think he controls it right now. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And he's made leaps and bounds in a very, very short time. So I think nothing but good things for him. I hope so. Yeah. I don't know if you caught the Chase Del Monte show when I had him I on. didn't. I apologize. Well, I'll tell you, he told me one of the best things what makes Flip so good is his balance. Yeah. He said he's never seen anyone do moves like that has better balance. Than oh my! Flip. He he. I mean, I don't know if you, you see some of his matches. One of his one of his uh, leads into his finishing maneuver is a top rope like super kick type yes. deal. I mean, the kid is just. He's got so much potential. I remember when he first started training at the school, he'd break out the crash pad after and do all this crazy stuff. Right. And Fury look at him and say, "What are you doing that for? That's like second nature. Just wrestle, learn how to wrestle." Yeah. Which that's what he's doing. And he's he's got it. Done. Absolutely, he's got it. Yeah. I can't wait to see him. You know, make NXT, WWE, yep. anyway. Impact. I'd rather see him with WWE, but if it's Impact that he had to go to first, yep. I mean, he's made it in Ring of Honor oh, now. Yeah. You know, yeah, fans love Marty him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what Marty Scroll. Yeah, great guy. You so you met him a few times? Uh, once. Okay. Once. Tell him, tell him. Yeah, I love yeah. that. What's he say? Whoop whoop. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty he's a great. And when I met him, I was kind of surprised because. On TV, you never know what these guys yeah, look like. Exactly. He's, he's shorter than I am. Is he really? Yeah. He's a, uh, about my work, height. What a work of art. I just saw him the he's other a, night. He's a wrestler. Yeah. Wrestle Kingdom 12. Yeah. See his entrance? Yeah. With the, yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. A lot of great entrances That's, that night. They all were. You know? You know? Kenny Omega's. That match. What did you think about that match? Phenomenal. Jericho and... Kenny. It was like being a fisherman on the on the edge of the wharf in the raw and the just hitting, hitting, hitting. It was hitting, incredible. Hitting. It told the it told a story. It did everything. Yep. The moves were insane, and it was just a great all around match. You know, I think a lot of people overlook it. I know everybody knows how great of a wrestler Chris Jericho is. Yep. And I'm sorry, the more I see him at this age of his, you know, at this age and this point of his career, yeah, blows me away that he's not talked as. One of the top wrestlers of all time. I agree. I agree. Him and I have a little, we probably have a little something in common. Yeah. <laughs> We're both older and like a fine wine. We get yeah, a little bit better. there you go. I'm just kidding. No, that's all right. But honestly, Jericho, man, he's always impressed me. Every time he steps away yep. and then comes back, he tweaks it just yeah. not too much. Yeah. You know, yeah. with the lighted jacket, which I, I couldn't believe he brought it back out for the oh, rest yeah. of the kingdom. Oh, yeah. But I mean, yeah. remember when he was I, doing that stuff with Owens? Yeah. yeah. The scarf? Yeah. I did his book signing at uh, at Northeast Wrestling oh, in nice. uh, New York at an outdoor show. Yeah. 
and I remember I told him, you know, I'm a referee and stuff, and then uh, he came in the locker room, and I got dressed, and he came over to me, patted me, tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, I'm going to be watching you, kid. He goes, hope you know the rule book like I do. And I'm like, yes, sir. And right? Just a great guy. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. And we only got a couple minutes left. So right. Is there anything you want to, anything else that you want to talk about? Any quick, all right, I'll get him, Chris. What's the, like, we already said it's like the worst thing, but have you ever seen anything like at locker room fights or anything? You don't have to name names or anything. I'm not, you know. Uh, only, only, uh, only one. Really? The only one is when I first started. Was with uh, uh, Lucas Sharp yep. and Johnny Idol. Really? It's going. It was Johnny like, Idol was a nice guy. I don't know like, Lucas. It was like pro wrestling takeover, I think, okay. way down in East Oshkosh. Yeah. And something happened, and the word old man was brought up, and that was the end of that. Wow. But Johnny's that, such a good guy. Yeah, he is a great guy. Do you, you remember his tag team with Mike Steele, the Eagle Maniacs? That was that. That, yeah. that I don't. Wow. Right. Honestly, I, you should, if you should try to look it up tonight, it's yeah. really good I mean, good I haven't stuff. known Johnny for a long time, right. but him and I have a very good relationship. Nice. You know? Yeah, I've been watching Johnny, and, and, and Mike left a long time ago. And I thought he had stepped away, but I guess he was still doing it down like where he's from, like yeah. Springfield or something like yep. that, that area. Yep. Um, we just saw our guy retire real quick. We'll talk about him. Oh, yeah. listen, you told me something about this a while ago. What's up with the what? I don't know. I'm not sure. I got a I got a text message a while ago to reserve the date. Yeah. And uh, they got the best refs in New England on the crew. You, I mean, you saw it right on the poster. Yeah. The three refs. And uh, the only thing I can say about that is when there's a conversation about the best refs in New England, kind of should be in the conversation. Oh, I'm I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you. Yeah. That is a fact. Yeah. Guys, Thank it's you. a fact. It Thank is. You. I mean, Thank but. You. But not to piss people off when I do say it. I said, if he's not the best, yeah. right at the top. Yeah. Because I don't want to piss off guys that I know are good refs. Sure. Tony S. Yep. Great I, ref. Yep. Know what I mean? Yep. Um, Everyone, these guys that I know. Sure. Um, yeah. I'm Rich Bass. I like Absolutely. Rich. Absolutely. It's my mentor I mean? when I started. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Kids are nice. I like him. I, yeah. I want to get him. We had set something up, and all of a sudden, he couldn't make it. Yeah. So I definitely want to get him on one but of I think the days. mentor and the student are, you know. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> Well, listen, we got 10 seconds left. Thank you to everybody for everything that you do. And actually, I just want to thank the pro wrestling community for what you did for me on my fundraiser. Thank you very much. And Jack, I miss you. Nice. Guys, that's it. We're out. Peace. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.